Hi YouTube, I'm back, kinda. Okay, let's check out the intro. Yes, 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 welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's like a hot mess, right? Like I don't edit my videos. The screen's all over the place, but that's just what I got to do for now. I post and talk about whatever's on my mind, whatever I want to talk about. So if you vibe with that, then please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. <sighs> if you think other people should see it, because we're talking about something that it means a lot to me, like. Um, I feel really connected to this story, um, Nixium. Oh Lord. Okay. So Nixium. Oh my gosh. I am trying to show you <laughs> what we're talking about. We're talking about Nixium. If you haven't heard of Nixium, um, kind of good for you. <laughs> it is is spelled N-X-I-V-M, and there is a lot, a lot, a lot wrong with this organization, and I really, really relate because I have been in organizations not nearly as severe as this, but they use very similar tactics. Um, long story short, this organization was a personal development company that turned out to be a X-rated alt with a C. The founder is in jail, sentenced to 120 years. He is currently in solita solitary confinement. And um, when you hear that headline, it's just kind of like, whoa, sensational. and. You kind of just move on, which is what I did when I first heard this headline last year. <clears throat> but I don't know something I, I watched. I watched this one lady's YouTube documentary on it, and I really wanted to understand it. And so I watched three documentaries, docu-series slash documentary on this group. And it really I was just really like shocked because the tactics used in this group are tactics that I've experienced before and maybe you have experienced it before. If you have any, if you like self-help in any capacity, if you're interested in self-help, if you have spent money and time going to anything, self-help, personal development, business development, you have been exposed to the very tactics used in Nixium. And I wanted to talk about it personally. I know I'm a small channel. <clears throat> and honestly, I tried to upload a video earlier and I guess the footage I used was not good footage and YouTube blocked my video. So I'm kind of re-recording, but I just wanted to share my thoughts as somebody who is a self-help junkie because like literally anybody could have been, if I had been exposed to this group, I would have taken a class. I would have at least taken a class. So first let's watch the trailers of the documentaries that I saw. So, oh God. Also, let me highlight somebody real quick. The thing about any disgusting group is that there will always be people who are still loyal to that group, including this guy, Mark Elliott. He, uh, he has Tourette's and he beats Tourette's because of Nixium, he, he claims. And um, that was like a major project Nixium was working on, was making this documentary with him about how you can beat threats. So 
He was mentioned in some of these documentaries, Seduce is one of them, and he wants to sue them for $12 million because he thinks they slandered his name. They mention him for like maybe two minutes. He was like a blip. He was a blip and nothing bad was said about him. So I just, I just find it really disgusting that there's, there's still people who support Nixiam and it's just kind of disgusting that this dude, you are more mad that your name came up in a documentary about this old. You're more mad about something you literally actually did. That's making you more mad than the disgusting things discussed in the documentary. That's it. You're not mad that you were part of an organization that that has didn't done what it's done. You're mad that you're in this, you're associated with this. Like, screw you, dude. Like, absolutely disgusting. But, um, so the first documentary I really recommend is The Vow. It's a series. Season two, I believe, will become, like, let me tell you, <laughs> because I thought it's just one and done. I thought it's just, oh, it's an X-rated alt, go to jail, one and done. But there is so much. There is so much in every every YouTube video that I watch. <laughs> I learned something new about this alt. But here's the trailer for The Vow you can watch it on HBO. Um, it's six ninety nine a month with ads, thirteen ninety nine a month without ads, I believe. If we understood the world and if we understood ourselves, that's worth everything. ESP Nexium is a methodology that allows people to optimize their behavior. Nexium is the umbrella company. Keith was the founder. He was a legend. So you can already see that if you're interested in improving your life in any way, you you would be setting foot into this organization. And I feel like there's this misconception that, um, oh, it's just people who are lost. It's just people who have low self-esteem. It's just, you know, there's this misconception that it's like a really sad type of person who would even get involved in this, but no, <laughs> like if you literally just saw an ad that said, improve your business outcomes, take this class. Like literally if, if it's just improve your communication skills, become a great speaker, take this class. Do you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? It's not just Oh, I'm lost in life. I don't know where to turn. Oh, what an interesting name for an organization. Maybe they'll help me. No, it's not like that. It's you, you wanted to learn something specific. You just wanted to learn a specific thing. Like, oh yeah, I'd love to be a better communicator. Oh, I'd love to, you know, improve my relationships. Um, I'd love to improve my business. I'd love to like be a great customer service. I'd love to improve my sales. Like if you're intrigued at all by improving yourself, your life or your business or your relationships. Oh yeah, I'm always working on my marriage. I'd love to take another class on my marriage. Like if you're interested in personal development or business development or self growth or whatever, you could get sucked into this. That's that's something I really want to emphasize. So, okay, let's say you decide to take the class. Like you have a friend that it's like, oh my gosh, this class really helped me. Come take it with me. You go and you see there's all these rich people, all these celebrities, all these like Rosario Dawson took a class. Like you see all these people that you feel like, oh, well, these are the kind of people taking the class and this must be legit, right? So you stay. Our main belief is to have people experience more joy in their lives. 
It's a worldwide organization. When conventional solutions don't work, maybe the unconventional way of thinking does. I was looking around at all these people that just didn't seem joyful. I started. That's a big thing for me. Um, gosh, I'm not going to get into all of the organizations I've been a part of that use these tactics. Maybe I'll mention it in passing as I pause and give my commentary. But one of the one of the number one warning signs when you're in in an alt or an alt like uh, organization is <clears throat> that the the mission. The, the people in the organization don't seem to be living the mission. So he, if the goal, according to him, is for people to experience more joy in their life, it's a big red flag when all of the people who are really deep in it, like all of the leaders, um, even just some, even if it's just like, well, it seems like half of them, right? If the leaders, if the really devoted students, like if the people who are the most committed to this organization are not, they don't look joyful, but the whole purpose of this is to be joyful, there's something wrong, right? There's something really, really wrong. And sometimes that's just a gut feeling because those people won't be truthful with you. Like you'll ask them, well, how's your experience been? Or how do you feel? And they're going to lie to you. They're going to say that it's changed their life, that they're, they're so happy. But you feel it, you can tell in your gut, like you can feel in your gut when somebody seems stressed, like chronically. And like you, you've been coming to this thing for however long, however many weeks, however many months, and you just notice there's something up with this energy. You can feel it. And in my experience, you're never wrong. Every time I felt it, I was right. Um, I was a part of this one organization. I just wanted to learn how to meditate and I was also really bored. So whenever they're like, oh, come, can you come check out this class? Can you come do this? Can you come do that? I'll be like, sure, why not? I have literally nothing else to do and I hate school. So any excuse to get off campus is cool with me. And I, there was this one teacher, she was running the whole organization and she just looked not happy. And then I found out later that she wasn't making any money. Like she was getting, she was collecting unemployment. She was collecting, you know, she was on food stamps, you know, and same thing with another organization I was a part of. God, I hate, I freaking hate the guy. Um, but yeah, he, he wanted everyone to have on fake smiles to attract more people. But it's like, you are really struggling and I can tell. And then once I actually built a relationship with those people and got to suss things out, I was like, oh, hell nah. <laughs> I started to get concerned. There's a secret organization in Nixium. They sign a lifetime vow of obedience and they're branding girls. And they're trying to recruit other women to do this. So that's when this Nixium story really got clout. I mean, there's there are people who've been trying to call out Nixium for a long time because the founder Keith, he um, he's a fraudulent person. He he was like a big deal in Amway, and then he created his own MLM, which got closed down because it was a literal pyramid scheme. Um, and so he lost a lot of credibility and then he started using rich people, especially rich women. And I'm talking like very rich, influential people. I'm talking the daughters and granddaughters of princesses, the children of ex-presidents in Mexico, uh, the daughters of billionaires. Okay, I'm talking very, very rich, influential people, especially the women. And he would use them to build Nixium. And, and then they create and then he created an alt within the Nixium alt, specifically to control women. And the thing that I learned, I didn't learn it from this documentary. Um 
this documentary, The Vow, helps you feel like what's it like to just be in the regular part of the alt? And they do talk about DOS, the X-rated portion of it. But I didn't realize how easy it was to, gosh, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay, we'll talk about it. But the thing is, once this DOS, this women being branded, once this came out, that made the story sensational. It happened to be around the same time as the Me Too movement. And so finally, this is what got the ball rolling to get the FBI involved and yada, yada, yada. I'm so strong. Like, you'd never be able to do what I just did. I That's what they would tell themselves. You know, they're getting branded. They're being, uh, they're being told to do very demeaning things. And they would tell themselves... I am strong. I'm proving my strength. And that is something that I, I've noticed in some organizations, um, especially the last, not the last, but the, the place, that, the very toxic work environment that I left earlier this year was very much like that. Um, rather than trying to improve work conditions, um, they wanted you to have a mindset of, you're strong, you're fearless, you, you can, you, this is going to make you stronger in business rather than, or we can just fix this problem because this is not, this is not normal and this is not helping our business. Um, you know, complaining makes you weak, this type of mentality, which was in, which would, they started training you to think this way very early on. We'll talk about it always want to earn my authority there's a lot of things bs and that's the that's the problem i had with my toxic work environment was the boss would say things like that i want to earn my authority but no he didn't he actually didn't do anything he actually while we're busting our a trying to impress him and ultimately make him more money he would be in his office watching netflix and eating cake. And then he would come out and act like we're, I'm in the trenches with you. I'm working hard. No, you're not. You're watching Netflix. I wish I could watch Netflix. <sighs> it's a lie. Like these narcissistic, power hungry people lie, lie, lie. About the organization, it's just not right. Our commitment is our power. You stay. There's no good way to leave, ever. Right, they teach you in Nixium, they teach you, and in any, in any organization like this, if you leave, you're weak. If you leave, you were afraid to go, you were afraid to push past your comfort zone, and so you're always gonna stay the same. You're always gonna have the same crappy results in your life. But actually, your life results were getting crappier and crappier the longer you stayed with this organization. But they try to twist, they try to distract your mind so you're not thinking about that. And you're just constantly thinking about next, the future, the future. You're not thinking about in this present moment, am I satisfied with my life? You're thinking about I'm going for something greater and more. They, con they constantly keep your mind out there into the future that could be whatever so you feel like well i have to say i've come so far i'm so close i have to expose what's going on this has to be stopped there are a group of people we're going to the press we are filing criminal charges you're branding my wife everybody is a blend of good and bad we're playing some sort of game chances are i'm gonna win Nobody joins a cult. They join a good thing. Yeah. Nobody wanted to join this. Nobody wanted to be a part of an organization that they would later find out, oh my gosh, I've been, that's what's been happening behind the scenes. Like nobody, nobody does that. Nobody wants to do that. You joined because you felt it was good for you. You had a great experience in the first class. So let me take the next class. You made uh, some great friendships in the first class. So I'll take the next one. Like you don't 
you don't say sign me up for some BS. You thought you signed up for one thing and then you find out later that it was all a lie. Okay, so that's the vow. Girl, what happened to my mouth? Like, girl, she, all right. Now this next one is on stars. This one documents the experience of a mom and a daughter. They took a class together. They thought it would be a great bonding mother-daughter experience. And then the daughter became a full-fledged alt member. And the mom did everything that she could to to get her daughter out because it was mostly she didn't wanna she didn't want to be saved. Don't save us. She don't want to be saved, you know. She didn't realize. Um how bad things are and that's that's the other thing when you get when you're in a bad work listen it's not just ults bad work environments do you know how many how many times have you had to listen to a coworker complain about their job about how horribly you're being treated and you ask why don't you leave i'm i'm leaving i, I just i have some job interviews lined up and they're like oh i don't know like this, this isn't just an ults. There's a lot of ults like stuff that goes on in just regular life stuff at, at work, at school, sororities and fraternities have stuff like, like this kind of stuff, these kind of tactics and, and definitely in self-help stuff. Okay. MLMs, these kind of tactics are used in a lot of places. It's just that when I dived into Nixium, I had never seen it taken this far before. Like, you know, even the 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 ults where they drink special Kool-Aid, you kind of feel like mm, you had to be, or you maybe you were kind of nutty. You know, like I don't know. I just never connected to any of these old stories as much as this one because when I watched these documentaries and I heard the language and I saw what what they're doing, how they lit- literally micro step by step lead you to destruction and how, yeah, I would have been a part. I don't know how far I would have gone. I f- I can't imagine. I don't know. I don't think I would have gone that far. But if I was in LA or so, if I had a friend present this to me, I definitely would have signed up for a class. And I would be on here, this camera talking about, I was, I used to be a member of this, this crazy thing, not knowing all the stuff behind it. So let's check out Seduced, this trailer. My name is India. I was in a cult for seven years. When I was a child, I felt very loved, but I grew up looking for a more purposeful life. Nexium was a program to make people's lives better. I found real deep sense of community. I felt like I was in the right place. So how did we all end up in the clutches of a monster? Keith Ranieri is the most horrific cult leader. He was someone that I really trusted. I can't tell you how much guilt I feel. My daughter. I've been in the presence of so much evil. I had to ask permission to eat. There's control of sleep. Demeaning sexual acts. It kept getting more extreme. All over the globe. Yeah, so the vow shows you like the overall thing and the reaction of men as well. Um, their reaction when they realize what's going on. And this one seduced um just shows you the the rabbit hole of how a woman can get from point a to just taking the little intro class to z you are fully fledged in the x-rated portion of the alt and you're recruiting other women to go through what you're going through and what they went through was very disgusting um x-rated um, non-consensual acts, group acts, photos, um, 
providing them material to blackmail you with. So it's not just a brainwashing that you went through. You're you're also being blackmailed. So there are several women who wanted to leave, who they, you know, snapped out of it. Um, One woman, she had a psychosis. She went into psychosis. But felt like they couldn't because, well, then I'm going to ruin my entire family dynasty. (laughs) Because these are, again, these are the children of very, very important people. Billionaires, royalty, politicians. And the thing is, hold on, let's finish this. We don't know how many victims there could be. The cruelty, it's beyond the pale. I didn't want to be saved. I had no idea the worst was about to happen. Yeah. So this one is on stars. And then there's another one called The Lost Women of Nixium. That's on Amazon. And that one is more about the women who disappeared, who we suspect Keith to have unalived. And he's admitted on camera that he has unalived people um, for what he believes. So... That one is also really interesting and just really takes you deeper. And literally, I was just watching uh, this one reporter. I don't know where he went. I was watching this one reporter kind of, he told his story about how they invited him to play volleyball. And and I learned, like literally every time I watch one of these YouTube videos, I learned something. I learned something new about how this ult worked. And <clears throat> one thing I've realized is that uh, Keith, this guy, he is an incel. Um, and I don't mean that he, he wasn't having relations. He was having all the relations in the world. Um, and he had been having all the relations in the world, but so what I've realized is you will join Nexium and you will learn, um, a a life philosophy that is not, it's not unique. It's not original. Um, it is literally the same stuff that they teach you in when you take beginner classes at the church of Scientology. So they take a lot of concepts from Scientology, a lot of their uh, phrasing as well. Um, Also concepts from EST, which, um, let's see if I can find out. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to, I think EST is kind of defunct now. But basically, EST is the precursor to Landmark. And if you don't know about Landmark, it is a personal development seminar series that (coughs) um, has a lot of celebrities who've taken it. A lot of Fortune 500 companies have their employees do it. Um, Yeah, it's basically... Something happened. Okay. So it's just like this uh, psychology philosophy that they have that is supposed to help you cope with life better or just be more effective. And it's essentially, and this is exactly what Nixium teaches. And I've done, I've done the first landmark. um, I did the first session, whatever it's called. I did the first seminar. So when I saw Nixium was having celebrities like Scientology, was having like all this credibility with different companies and important people like Landmark, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've experienced something like this before. And then when you hear how they work through, um, how they do the exercises, it's like, wow, this is like Landmark, where basically you are trying to Separate yourself from emotion. (laughs) 
Um, you're trying to, it is this a way to help you think about things. So you, you are more third party and you are supposed to view like everything in your life this way. Um, and they talk about limiting beliefs, uh, in, in, um, in Landmark, they talk about this some other way, but in Nixium, there's limiting beliefs. There's all this stuff, right? So after something like a Nixium retreat or a Landmark retreat, any anything, I've done Tony Robbins. I've done so many different things, okay? And when you go to that kind of stuff, you feel like you were helped. You feel good. You're on a high. Even if it wasn't that significant, like there's people who will have major breakthroughs, And there's people who be like, meh, that was cool. Okay. But either way, you, eight times out of 10, you had a positive experience. And depending on if you have life goals or, you know, whatever, whatever your goals are or whatever it helped you with, you might want more. So you'll sign up for the next class. Um, and just keep going. And so that's what these Nixian people have done. They just have all these classes. And what they'll do is they'll say, once now, now you're kind of in it. Like you just keep taking class after class and now you're in it because now you have friends, you have a community there. You might want to feel more significant because you're there so much. So you'll take a volunteer position. Like you can start to get in it. And then they'll, they'll have more classes to try to get you into. And so the first classes don't have Keith talking. And there's a really good reason for that. Keith is... Keith is really obnoxious and pretentious. He's not really likable. Um, after, like without the big edification, he's not really likable. And also the things he says is really off-putting. So they don't have him speak at first. <laughs> but once you get deeper into it, then you'll hear him speak. And by the time you hear him speak, he's been edified. He's this, he's that, he's the most genius person in the world. He really thinks he is the most genius person in the world. Yeah, if you're so genius, why are you in jail, stupid? Anyway, um, he's been edified and then you meet him and everybody's like, when they first saw him or they first interacted with him, they felt like he's kind of weird, but he's surrounded by all these people adoring him. So you just kind of like, I, well, I guess I'll just listen to what he has to say. And he'll, he has these classes for women and these classes for men. And both of these classes are highly misogynistic. Basically it's surrounding from what I've gathered, it's surrounding, um, this idea that men, when they were little boys, they didn't get love. They were never protected. Basically, I know he says don't be the victim, but he kind of victimizes the men. <clears throat> um, and he talks a lot about like, he says a lot of things like, why can't, why can't you are a baby? Why can't you, like, I'm, I wish I was kidding. Watch it, watch the documentaries. He says these things with a straight face. Um, and some of the men were like, can we talk about like, not this (laughs) and, and Keith just has an answer for everything. Well, we got to go over the basics and, you know, SEX is the most primal basic thing that we need to talk about and whatever. And then the women's class, they talk about how women are emotional, not just that women... Like you, you've heard men are logical, women are emotional. I hate, I hate that. I, I don't think it's true. Like I, I have a friend, he was like, wouldn't, don't you agree, Doka, that women are more emotional? I'm like, absolutely not. I don't agree. Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? It, you, 
Of all the emotional people I've had to deal with in my life, the ones who have caused problems for me because of their emotion, most of them have been men. And you're not going to sit here and tell me that anger, insecurity, um, narcissistic tendency, like you're not going to sit here and tell me these things are not emotional responses. Like you're, <laughs> you're not going to tell me insecurity, um, you know, fear, uh, fear of vulnerability. You're not going to sit here and tell me those things are not emotional. Like just because it's socially acceptable for a woman to cry in public, that, that does not mean men are not emotional. Like you're not, you're not going to tell, no, I'm so sorry. You're not going to try to gaslight me like that. But anyway, I, I personally, I hate that narrative, but he, what he's teaching them is that women are emotionally immature, that women have the minds of children, <clears throat> um, that women are princesses that uh, always get, you get away with whatever you want to get away with. Um, you try to control the world via SEX. So like he would judge you like, like if my shirt was like this, he would be like, mm, you're trying to show some skin. What? Oh, you're trying to, you think that you can just say and do whatever you want because you, you showed some chest skin right there. Oh, you're wearing lipstick. Why are you wearing lipstick? Like, are you trying to tantalize me? Like everything, everything. He is like, he over overly and overtly actualizes women and berates them for like existing. Like, wow, you have breasts, your breasts. I kind of can, I can kind of see the shape of your breasts through that shirt. Like, what do you do? Like, <laughs> it's really disgusting. Um, and so once you start getting into those type of classes, that the brainwashing to enter the X-rated alt has already begun. You've, you're, you're already like, and you're taking it like, yeah, it's true. Women are more emotional. Like how, how does that apply to me? And you, you know, everything is, you're not thinking f at, of it from like an intellectual standpoint. You're thinking of it from, what does that mean about me? Because if you have any objection, they turn it on you. So if I objected, like, no, I don't think women are more emotional than men. I'm sorry. I think it depends person to person. Like you, you cannot, you're not going to tell me you're, I show you the rates of a spouse or a, a girlfriend pa passing away and how many times it was a significant other who did it. And you're really going to sit here. You're really going to sit here and tell me that men are not emotional. You're really you're really going to tell like, okay. So if I was in that class, it would already be like, mm, Udoka, I sense resistance. What are you resisting? And I'd be like, I'm resisting this misog misogynistic rhetoric that you're trying to indoctrinate me in. Mm. Udoka, what would you lose if you were to accept the teaching? What would you lose? Well, I would lose my autonomy. I would lose my sense of freedom to be who I am. I would lose, I would, I would, you know, I, they would have me talk about these things that are important to me. And then they would pick up on it and they would be like, has it occurred to you that maybe you can take this teaching and actually free yourself, actually give yourself more autonomy? Do you, you get, you get the line of processing <laughs> that that's what they'll do. And if you've already entrusted them with these people are part of my personal and spiritual development and growth, you're going to take that and you're going to, you're going to reflect and you're just going to go deeper and deeper. 
it behaves very much like an MLM where in order to move up the ranks, you have to recruit and you have to keep being a product of the product. You have to keep buying classes and taking classes. So there's always more new classes that you got to take. And unfortunately, people weren't getting paid. They kept changing the pay structure and this and that. Or or some people, they would just never advance them. They would just never give them their new ranking. And so they created the X-rated alt. And they would tell the women, you know, the most invested women, the, the women who are trying to move up, and tell them, I think this will really help you, but it's a secret. I really want to share the secret with you, but you have to share a secret with me. And that's how they start collecting the blackmail. Give me what you can. Give me dirty pictures. Give me family secrets. Give me, give me bank accounts. Give me, put my name on the D tier house. Give me, give me, give me, give me. So if you let out the secret, we'll, we'll let out your secret. But you're never going to let out our secret. So, you know, it's totally fine. You can tell me. And they just, they just like step by step. Okay, now you're in. So this is a master-slave relationship. That's what they called it, master-slave relationship. And they're like, wait, master-slave? That sounds weird. Actually, it's not weird at all because aren't you a slave to your limiting beliefs? already? Aren't you a slave to your fears? Aren't you already a slave to your bad habits? Wouldn't you like to master those things? Wouldn't you rather be, wouldn't you rather be the slave to a master that will show you the way? They, they twist it. They, tw they twist it. They say whatever you need to hear and they just take it every step of the way. Everything is framed with this is for your own good. This is for your own good. Even up to the point when you're in Keith's bed, you're in Keith's bed and he's telling you this is for your own good. The thing with Keith though, and everything is recorded because he really thought he did that. He really thought he was the next Albert Einstein. So he recorded everything in hope like so one day he can have a documentary made about him thanks we appreciate it because it was enough evidence to put you in jail for the rest of your natural life but um you'll hear moments of him like being a social like he's a social he's a sociopath you'll hear moments where he's just kind of tired of having the facade and he'd be like could you just get over it <laughs> Like one of his little followers would be like, I really want to talk to you about X, Y, Z problem I'm having. And he'd be like, oh yeah, well tell me how, how does it feel? Well, blah, blah, blah. And he'll be like, oh. can you just get over it? Huh? What do you mean? Like, let's talk about something else. <laughs> like he has no sympathy, um, no empathy, clearly. And what's crazy he has something about what he has something against women. He wanted to use this ex alt to have women in his control who are in high places, politicians. Um, I think he even, you know, hoping that one day he'll have, he'll get a female president in office that who is under his control. He has some fixation about controlling women. Um, and, and he wants to control the most powerful women, right? So he'll always state c female CEOs, uh, self-made millionaire women. Um, he'll always state the, like, the top women, the most ambitious, the most intelligent, the most... <sighs> he'll, he'll always be with those kind of women. Use them. Use them. Hey, can you help me start my business because... Um, I have this pyramid scheme, on, pyramid scheme on my record. So nobody wants to do business with me. Can you give me your connections and help me start this business? Can you be the face of my business? Can you help develop a curriculum for this business? Can you, he always has women doing everything for him. I think he gets a kick out of this idea that these women who, who are able to do what he can't, 
but he but he still has the control. And he gets to host classes to talk about how stupid women are, how emotional, how they can't actually succeed in the world, how they can't do, like he has, he has these classes discussing these things. Um, I'm sure he gets a kick out of, he has a day's classes where he has the men like degrade the women, like, okay, we're going to treat the women the way we were treated when we were little boys. Let's degrade them. Let's humiliate them. And ultimately have them be literally his slaves. <sighs> With his initials burnt right above their punani. And it's all. <laughs> he's able to do all of this. By step by step. Don't you want to be better? Don't you want to be better? Don't you want to be better? You know, if you want to be better, you have to push past your comfort zone. These things that I've heard in all kinds of self-help stuff, in the self-help books and everything, when I learned sales, I push way past my comfort zone to become a salesperson and get into sales. And it's just crazy to think that's the same mentality, that same tactic and mentality that has helped me improve in certain areas of my life can be twisted to something so sick and demented. He's also, he also has a thing for girls, like actual girls, like underage. He had a child P on his computer and he has um, statutory R. <sighs> yeah. Like I mentioned, I think he's unalive people. I think he's unalived, uh, women he's impregnated. He also has a thing against lesbians because that's a threat to him, right? That's a woman that he wouldn't <clears throat> be able to have any kind of sexual control over. Um, <clears throat> he, he would have his slaves um, eat only 500 calories a day so they get super skinny, lose their periods, have no shape, kind of childlike, right? He wants them very small. He, he would talk about, wow, you're so small, you're so small. He has a thing for that. So when I think about that, I think about, <clears throat> you know, how... In his gendered classes, he talks so much about, you know, how little boys were treated and raised. And man, I don't know what happened in his childhood. Maybe that's the next rabbit hole I'll go into. Like what happened in his childhood that he's fixated on little girls. And being with women who remind him of little girls Little obedient girls. Jeez Louise. <clears throat> and the people were supporting this. People who had no idea about the X-rated part. Supporting it. Millions of dollars. Women who were in the X-rated part supporting it. There are women in that, in that, that part. They, they paid the Dalai Lama to come take a picture with him so he can use that for clout. Like, it's insane. It's really insane. And I wanted to share my reaction as somebody who's really into self-help and has used these tactics and has been messed up and, ha and has had a really disgusting boss who used these exact same tactics to to try to keep people in line and all for the sake of this is for you that you're going to make so much commission. You're going to make so much money. You're going to be a leader. You're and when I s snapped out of it, well, what happened, what helped me snap out of it was seeing the facts. Um, was seeing that he lied was seen, like, all I had to see was that he lied. And I see the facts, and then they had to grapple with, man, should I leave, or 
should I just make the most of it or and then eventually you realize you have to leave (laughs) you have to leave and just bite the bullet because once I realized my boss was literally trying to make his workplace an alt that's like a shrine for him you know it's like ew um actually I want to live my life And it's crazy because when I was working in that toxic work environment, there were people who felt it too. They could see it, but they couldn't leave. I'm just like, why? (laughs) Once you realize what's going on, how can you, how can you stay? How are you not disgusted? How Do you not want to vomit every moment you see his face? I don't know how people rationalize stuff in their head. The women in this expirated ult, they had blackmail against them. Like serious blackmail. It's very difficult to leave. Even when you come to your senses and you realize what's going on. (sighs) Because also, this dude has a history of unaliving people, too. It's incredibly scary. He hires private investigators. Do you know how scary it is to have the the family of Mexican presidents use their PIs to investigate you? And find you and hunt you down? Like, this is scary. It's very scary. And, and once you, once you realize what's going on, you know, it's going to get shut down. Eventually it'll get shut down. And if you're still in it, you can get blamed. Cause didn't you recruit a, a, a girl or two? You can get blamed. You can be seen as the perpetrator and go to jail too. When actually you we're just as brainwashed as the other slaves. It's crazy. It's just crazy to think about. And it really makes me like take a second look at all the self-help stuff that I've done or participated in. Not that um, I think it's all bad now or anything like that. Just thinking about all the philosophies and tactics and the pseudo coaching, the pseudo therapy. And how easy it is to have gotten involved in this. Like literally, if you're somebody who just wants to improve anything in your life, you can get sucked in because maybe you just, Maybe you just got out of a relationship. Maybe your business is really struggling and you think, hey, this this can, I'm going to take more classes because ever since I took that class, my customers have been happier. Like, they give you some results. They give you some results. And then once, once you form a community there, you're in there. Once you have a, once you feel like you have a community of people that get you, in there, you're there. You can be the most well-adjusted person. You can be the most, you could be, you could be like such a happy-go-lucky person, you know, and you were just there because, you know, it's always good to learn something new. But once you feel like, oh, I like these people. Once you feel like I like these people, I want to hang out with these people. You're in. You're in. How far you go just depends, but you're in. And little commitments. I mean, you're paying a lot of money to take their classes. That's a lot of commitment. (sighs) That would make you remain there. I mean, there's just so many things. (sighs) 
I'm so disgusted. We live in a world like this, and you know there's more. This is not the only one. You know there's more. Like, for every Keith Rainey, whatever his name is, there's more of them. They just haven't gotten caught. You know, like, some of the old members, they were trying to get him caught on the statutory R. They were trying to get him caught on, like, embezzlement and money laundering. They were trying to get him caught but it wasn't until the X-rated stuff came out that he was caught. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's organizations that maybe they don't take it as far as he did. You know, they, they kept it at the we can get away with it level. They're out there. I just wanted to share my thoughts. You know, I'm somebody who... I love self-help. I love, I love checking stuff out and. Oh, what happened to my computer? Yeah. I'm somebody who, who loves that stuff. And I'll, even if something has negative reviews, I'll still see for myself. Yeah. Scary to think about. Let's be vigilant. And I think, I don't know, I feel like some red flags would be like if your first experience, like really think about was it worth the money? Really think about it. And don't go back if it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't do it. If it don't go to, don't tell yourself, maybe I'll get more out of the next class. Like, don't go back. Um, if there's weird behaviors, like Keith was kissing people on the lips, you know what I mean? Like if there's things that are off putting to you, you know, don't, don't thwart, don't thwart your gut feeling. Like don't. Do not trash your gut feeling. I think also if something that was supposed to help improve your life starts to become your life, that's, yeah, that's not, that's a bad, that's a really, that's a big warning flag. Cause that hap that's happened to me, that's happened to me that Oh, I just wanted to learn a thing or two. And now I'm like, <laughs> now it's taking up all my time. And it's like, that's, I didn't sign up. I didn't sign up for this to take up my time. Like you just kind of had to, you got to like realize, wait a second. So it's always good. Actually, yeah, what I would do was I would write, I would journal and I would go back and look at my journal entries and be like, Wow. I completely forgot about that. It's kind of like how I have this love of dance and I completely, I was just going through, I was going to therapy because of that nasty, toxic boss. And I had just completely forgot about my love of dance. Like they really made me feel like, oh, you can put all your other passions and loves on the back burner. Like, why don't you focus on this for now? And that's crazy because I've been to, I remember when there was this class, this school of metaphysics. I, I think that it's legitimately an old, that's for a story time later, but I was taking their class just to learn meditation and they wanted me to like stay for the full course and come every week. And I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. It's kind of cool, like, whatever. And then they wanted me to, like, start volunteering or do, like, the level two class or something. And I was like, why? <laughs> oh, because don't you want to get to the next level? I'm like, the next level of what? Of your life. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to get to the next level of my life. Well, don't you think level two of our course would help? 
And I'm like, um, the level two is talking about astral projection and past life regression. Like that's, I'm, I was just trying to learn how to meditate. Like, I don't, I don't like, that's not pertinent to my life. They were really trying hard. Like, don't you think you would, you know, don't you think you're as a holistic person, you know, take the holistic approach and I'm like, I don't care about your little levels, right? Oh, they wanted me to like graduate and you're like, it's really important to graduate. And I'm like, why? Because it shows that you finished what you started and don't you want that sense of accomplishment? And I'm like, I don't give a, like the school of metaphysics is not a real school. You're not accredited. It's not a degree. Um, I'm not going to get no jobs from it. I just came to take your meditation class and I'm in these other classes because I'm literally bored and have nothing else to do. Like I am not interested in graduating your fake school. You know, like I felt them, they were trying to, I came for one reason and they were trying to make me give a, sh- a, sh- a shizzle about their arbitrary system and their arbitrary levels. And it's like, I didn't come here for your, I didn't come here for that. I didn't come here for a piece of paper that says I graduated school of metaphysics. So maybe that's one that maybe that's like a really big sign. Like when the, when they start trying to shift your attention. Cause yeah. Cause if I was like, oh yeah, I'll graduate. Then all of a sudden I'm focused on what do I have to do to graduate rather than my life. And that's what this, that's what they, that's what Nixium did. Oh, anyway, I just had to share that because that was crazy. And every YouTube video I watch, it's like a new, oh my gosh, I'm so sleepy. I'm going to go to bed. Thanks for listening. Leave paw prints in the comment section so we know you were here. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on this? Because yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about this again, probably like this is so disturbing to me. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to go to bed. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.